I'm really curious about what we can do with narrative. Um, I, it's, not, it's not for everybody, but it's, I think of it as an album. When you put on an album of music, you get, you get a few things. You get, hopefully, a, a pretty good emotional experience. You get a sense that this is something you either want to live with or you don't. Um, and then, at some point, you put it on again, and maybe again. And after a while, you come to find things about it that were not obvious from the get-go, and you come to internalize that work. And then you know whether this is something that's going to be long-lived or something that maybe isn't. I mean, I think editing is just, uh, for, for this, it was just yet another way that we had to keep informing of a more subjective experience. I mean, the film actually moves through, I think, you know, different narrative layers, because we've got a lead character that is starting in one place, ending in another, but almost the entire time questioning what, the, what her appropriate narrative is and, and what, what are these events that are happening just off screen that are somehow affecting her or poking her, but she can't speak to them. Um, and, and so because of that, she's, she's moving through different, um, different uh, not realities, but narratives, I mean, different personal narratives. So everything that we're doing has to inform that. And so we start off in a very lockdown mode where most, we're using compositions and hope, hopefully interesting compositions, but mainly static shots to convey information. And then in the middle third, we get into a much more subjective space where um, we are following Chris and Jeff through um, seeing, seeing how they are reacting to events that we know have transpired, but they don't. And, um, you know, it, it almost approaches a, a found footage or a home movie mode uh, uh, in some places. But the idea to be able to just switch up cinematic modes whenever we need to, based on what Chris's experience is, I felt like there were, we had the freedom to do that. And then the last third, we get into another space entirely where we're dealing almost with nothing but subtext and, and will and, and a carry forward of the momentum that's, that's been building there. And so, yeah, when we traverse different locations with match cuts, I mean, all of that stuff has to be very well planned out in advance. Um, sorry, you're asking about the editing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's just w one of the other things to, to inform that. And, and so David Lowry came on. Um, I was really struggling to keep up. Um, uh, and I was, I, was, I, was, um, I was not keeping up, basically. I, I was losing more and more every day. And, and, and it was affecting everything else. So he was nice enough to come in. And I didn't know what to expect. But he started putting things together according to, you know, he'd internalized the film and internalized what we had done so far and looked at a, a, some of my editing and just started to uh, just do a really thorough, wonderful job of, of matching that without ego. And we quickly got into a collaborative mode where I came to trust him so much and his ideas, and he, he was starting to inform the edit, obviously, himself. And so I would start during the day to shoot for his edit, and he'd be editing for you know whatever notes I took for, for the shoot. And um, it was truly collaborative. And then at the end of shooting, you know, we were able to work together um, concurrently, and you know, he'd be in one room, I'd be in the other, and we'd just go back and forth. Much of the music was written during the writing process for the script, um, uh, mainly so that I have some confidence. When I've got a moment that I'm imagining in my head, if I know what we can do with, with, with the visual language, and I know, you know the other parts of the script, if I have a piece of music that I can, I can get more or less perfected for this moment, then I know, OK, great. I can sort of swirl these together in my head and know we'll, we'll get there. Um, and then I can start to build on that. So that's how it starts. And then before long, I've got something that I think of as the complete score. Um, and then that starts to inform uh, our, the visual language as we ramp up to production. And then you know, Amy Simon shows up and, and shows how effective she's going to be in the lead. And then that says something about the other elements. Um, so yeah, the music starts early. And then it continues to change depending on what it needs to do and, and how the other departments inform it. Um, and uh, yeah, and then you asked about the soundscape. And um, yeah, I mean, that was something that most, most of what's going on in the film as far as sound is in the script. And then there are other things where this process that I'm, I'm describing that I think everybody probably knows, but whatever. I find myself describing it um, as if I'm, I'm, I'm doing something new or something. But this, this process, you know, before getting into production where um, all of these departments are figuring out how they're going to work and there's this storm of networking and, and perfecting, um, things happen. And so here's what I'm trying to get to. There's, there's a scene in the film where, where Chris and Jeff are both at work and they're lost in the sounds of the workplace. And then that's the, each of those sounds bleed into each other. They bleed into sounds in nature where the sampler is. is and, and you know we're basically informing that there is a, there is a unknown connection at, 
at work here. And we almost don't want to say any more than that. And that was, event, that was originally going to be told through visual cues. We would, we would you know, uh, Chris would be having lunch downtown and at a, a small sculpture of a cityscape. Her hand would inch closer and closer to a certain building without her knowing it. We would push into a miniature of that building, match cut to the actual building that Jeff was working at. And then we would find another visual cue to match back to her. And it would all be told silently and through visuals. 